ideal gas law. So we've seen pressure, volume, and temperature, and moles, and we've dealt with laws involving all of those variables. What the ideal gas law is, is an equation that relates those variables to each other so that we can convert to one of them given the rest of them. So pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature we've all seen before. What we're going to talk about first after we talk about units is this variable here, R. Um, so first off, we're going to put the pressure in kilopascals. We're going to put the volume in liters. Not because they have to be. They could be, you could use this equation with them in some other unit, but the R value that we're going to use requires them to be in kilopascals and liters. You could use another unit, but then your R is going to have a different value as well. So to make things simple, we already know how to convert to kilopascals. We know how to convert to liters. So we're going to do that when using this equation. Temperature, of course, has to be in Kelvin. And then moles is going to be in moles. So the question is, what is R? What is the relationship between pressure, volume, moles, and temperature? And to think about this, we already know something about a gas at a particular pressure, volume, a certain amount of it at a certain temperature. So if we want to figure out what R really is, what the connection between these variables is, is we can think of an ideal gas at a specific set of circumstances. And the one thing that we do know is that if you have, so we want to look for R here, um, if we knew the pressure, the volume, the number of moles, and the temperature, we could find out what R is. And we do know those under one set of circumstances, and that is S T P, standard temperature and pressure. That would be 101.3 kPa with a pressure, uh, as a pressure, um, a temperature of zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. And we also know, um, from looking at Avogadro's, we know that at STP, the volume of one mole of gas is 22.4 liters. So if you had one mole of gas at STP, it would have a volume of 22.4 liters. And we know the pressure at STP is 101.3, and the temperature is 273 Kelvin. So given all four of those variables, we can actually figure out what the value of R is. And it works out to be 8.314, um, and the units on it do not cancel out. So the units for R are rather complicated. It's kilopascals, liters per moles Kelvin, or Kelvin mole, doesn't matter which order they are in. Um, and 8.314 is the numerical value for R as long as we're dealing with these units. And that's why we're always going to stick to kilopascals and liters, and definitely Kelvin and moles because then this value will always be 8.31 and, and if you want some more precision, 8.314. And you can remember that value as 8.314. One way to remember is the, you know what is better than 7 pi's is 8 pi's. All right, ideal gas law. That's the equation. Pressure in kilopascals, volume in liters, temperature in Kelvin, moles in moles. And R is going to be 8.314 kilopascal liters per mole Kelvin. This is a constant. So we can think of this as being the, the ideal gas law constant. This number is going to remain constant. It is the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles. So let's try a question out using the ideal gas law. So let's say we had 57.3 liters of any gas, it doesn't matter, we're treating them as if they're all ideal gases, um, and it's kept at a pressure of 108 kilopascals, and the temperature is 294 Kelvin, what mass of gas do we have present? Now if we want mass, that, that equation, the ideal gas law doesn't have mass in it, but it has moles in it. So if we find moles, we can then use the molar mass to go to mass. To find moles, we're going to take our equation, PV equals nRT, we're going to rearrange for number of moles, so again, leave number of moles on the right, we divide both sides by RT. So we have RT here, you can do anything you want to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides. That's what an equation is all about. RT cancels out on the right, and we have N equals PV over RT. And it's just a matter of plugging in the values and solving. Now, it is a bit tedious, but you should write down the units for R every time you use it they will cancel out. So if kilopascals on the numerator here will cancel out with the kilopascals in R's units. Liters will cancel out with the liters in R. 
Calvin here will cancel out with Calvin in the units for R. Now we have 1 over moles as a denominator on the bottom, which means our unit for our, our calculation here, the final unit will be in moles. Plug it in and you end up with 2.53 moles as the number of moles of this particular gas. The question asks for mass, so it's just a matter of using the molar mass. 44.02, and again, moles will cancel out to the molar mass, giving us our answer in grams, and therefore there are 111 grams of N2O present.